In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate uh, binomial probabilities. Um, I'm actually going to walk you all through uh, an example that comes from your book. It's on page 521. And the example says, Corinne typically makes 75% uh, of her free throws. In a particular game, she takes 12 free throws. And we want to calculate the probability that she makes at most seven of those shots. So first of all, let's uh, just talk quickly about whether or not this truly is a binomial setting. Uh, we said our first requirement was that there had to be only two outcomes, uh, success and failure. Uh, so hopefully it's pretty easy to see that that uh, requirement is satisfied. Either she makes the shot or she doesn't. Uh, the second requirement was that there had to be a finite number of um, observations, uh, and that requirement is satisfied because there are 12, sh 12 shots taken in a game. Uh, we also needed independent events. Um, this requirement's a little bit of a stretch. If you think about sports psychology at all, you might know that um, you know, your performance at one point in the game can sort of affect your mental outlook later on in the game, but let, let's ignore that for now and just assume that each of the 12 shots that she takes are all independent. Whether she makes the first free throw is not going to impact whether she makes the second one and so on. And then finally, uh, we want our probability of success to be uh, consistent for all of our observations, and that requirement is also satisfied uh, because we know that Typically, she's going to make 75% of her free throws. So for each individual shot, she has a 75% chance of making it. So it turns out that, yes, this is truly a binomial setting. So we can use our uh, binomial formulas that we talked about uh, in the last video. So uh, what we need to do is, first of all, we need to pay close attention to what this question is asking. We're asked to find the probability that she makes at most seven of her shots. So that means we need to calculate the probability that she makes zero shots, the probability that she makes one shot, the probability that she makes two shots, and so on, up to the probability that she makes seven of those shots. Uh, because we've got quite a bit of calculating to do, uh, or several calculations to perform, uh, I'm going to create a chart, which I've already done on the next page, to help us organize our information a little bit. Uh, we also need to talk about the difference between a PDF and a CDF. And no, I'm not talking about um, a PDF file. In statistics, a PDF stands for a probability density function, and a CDF is a cumulative density function. So anytime you're dealing with uh, a probability question, doesn't necessarily have to be one related to a binomial distribution, but anytime you're dealing with a question that asks you something like this one, that asks for uh, you to calculate something that happens at most a certain number of times, or at least a certain number of times, then what you're actually doing is you're calculating something related to the cumulative density function. That's this guy. But in order to calculate... Uh, a value from the cumulative density function, you have to calculate each of the values that are related to the probability density function first. And the probability density function simply tells you uh, what the probability is that each individual outcome is going to occur. So the PDF is what would tell you what's the probability that she makes exactly zero shots, or what's the probability that she makes exactly one shot. So that's what we're going to be calculating first. We're going to be looking at the PDF, and that's what I'm representing here with um, the symbol P of X, meaning what's the probability that she makes um, X shots. Below that P of X notation, I've got F of X, and F of X is going to represent the CDF, the cumulative density function. Uh, we'll deal with that a little bit more in just a moment. So let's start off by filling in these values for the probability density function. That means first we need to begin with calculating the probability that she makes zero shots. So I'm going to move over to the next slide so we can do that. So the probability that Corinne makes exactly zero shots out of the 12 shots that she takes, uh, we're going to use our binomial probability formula. So that means we need to figure out how many ways we can 
combine um, 12 shots if we only if we want to make zero or sorry, excuse me how many ways we can combine zero makes if we have 12 shots to choose from we know that there is a 75 percent chance of her making any one shot so we're going to raise that to the zero power and if she has a 75 percent chance of making a shot that means she has a 25 percent chance of missing it and we're going to raise that to the 12 minus zero or the 12th power so we're going to just calculate that And here's the probability that she is going to miss all 12 of her shots. It's 0 0.00000596, which should make sense. If she's a 75% free throw shooter, it is extraordinarily unlikely that she would miss all 12 shots. So now we can go on and we can calculate the probability that she makes one shot. So here we're going to do 12 choose 1 times 0.75 to the first power times 0.25 to the 11th and give me oops, 11th, there we go, give me one second and I'll calculate that value turns out that the probability that she makes only one shot is 0 0.00000215 so also extremely unlikely which again makes sense since she's a relatively good free throw shooter let's do just one more uh, probability this way. Let's calculate the probability that she makes two shots. Uh, this will be 12 choose 2 times 0.75 to the second power times 0.25 to the tenth. And this probability is 0 0.00003544. So the probabilities are slightly increasing, but we still haven't uh, found the most likely outcome. Um, I'm going to fill in the probability density function chart in just a second. Uh, but before I do that, I do want to say that um, if you want to calculate each of these probabilities by hand, like I've been doing, you certainly can do that. But as you can see, it's kind of a time-consuming process. There is a faster way that you could do this on your calculator, and I'll give you a hint. It's going to involve using your lists, um, but I'd like for you to all uh, try to kind of figure out how you could do that on your own. You're going to have to use a list numbered from 0 to 12, and that could be in list 1, and then in list 2, you're going to try to have to figure out um, how you could write a formula that would populate with all of these various uh, probabilities from making zero shots up to the probability of making 12 shots. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've calculated each of the probabilities associated with Corinne making from zero up to all 12 shots. And you should be able to see, uh, like we already said, the first few values that we calculated were incredibly small because it's very unlikely that someone who makes 75% of her free throws would make only one or two or three um, of her 12 attempts. Then as we continue across the probability density functions chart, you see that the probabilities begin to increase. Uh, so there's a 0.2% chance of her making four shots, there's a slightly over a 1% chance of her making five shots, about a 4% chance of her making six shots. So it should make sense that as you uh, increase the number of successes, that her probability of having that many successes also increases. She's a 75% free throw shooter, so it should also not be a surprise that the most likely outcomes fall in this higher range. Uh, we see that actually making nine shots out of the 12 ends up being the most likely outcome of all with a probability of um, almost 26 percent. Also you notice that after you hit that high point uh, of 25 percent or 26 percent at nine shots or nine attempts, excuse me, nine makes, uh, then the probabilities begin to decrease after that point. Uh, as you increase the number of makes even more, there ends up only being a three percent chance that she would make all 12 shots, which would make sense again, because as the probability, or as the number of shots increases what we expect, um, 
the probability of that outcome increases, and then as we surpass the number of attempts that we expect her to make, then the probability begins to decrease. So there's the PDF function for you. But we still haven't answered our question. We want to know what is the probability that she makes at most seven of her shots. So in order to do that, we're going to need to calculate the cumulative density function. Now the cumulative density function uh, simply takes all of our values from the probability density function and adds them up. So for instance, our first entry for our CDF chart is just going to be the same as the probability of getting zero makes, and that's going to be 6 times 10 to the negative 8. So there's a very, uh, like we said, a low probability of that happening. And then we simply just keep summing up um, for each of our subsequent attempts. For our cumulative density for making one shot, that's going to be uh, just what we get when we add the results for getting zero makes and one make, and that's going to be 2.2 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, and just for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and fill in this chart for you all. Okay, so I've got the values for the cumulative density function filled in, and I just want to point out a couple of things. First of all, you should be able to see that as we increase the number of makes, the values in the cumulative density function also increase, which should make sense because its definition is simply that you add up uh, each of the values from your probability density function. So a CDF function never decreases, it only increases. And once you have hit um, all of your observations, you have accounted for all of them, then the last value in your CDF should always be 1 because you have accounted for all of the possibilities. Anyway, uh, so now we are ready to answer, oops, to answer our question, which was, what is the probability that she makes at most seven shots? So all we would need to do is find the CDF value that corresponds to making seven shots, and that is 0 0.1567. So there is a 15 point, or 76167, seven. there's a 15.76% chance uh, that she will make at most seven shots. Uh, also, that would mean that um, there is a, what is that, an 84.24% chance that she would make eight or more shots. And I simply got that value by taking 100% and subtracting the 15.76%.